He's an arsehole. He's just an arsehole. I don't know any other way to put it. I've tried. Believe me, I've tried. If you were to look up in the dictionary to find the word, how to be nice to Oliver, there you would find my name in big bold letters, Saint Hannah. But you know what? Sometimes you just have to accept that a person just is an arsehole. Hannah Williams. <laughs> of course I know her. <laughs> She's that bit of skirt who took over from June. Ah, June. There was a woman who knew how to organise. Made the best cup of tea, too. Anything you wanted doing, she would do it straight away. No complaints, no fuss. She could teach these girls a thing or two. Whatever happened to her? I just don't get it. I mean... He seemed to get on okay with June before she retired, but maybe that's because she just clocked about him all the time. Can I get you a cup of tea, Mr. Jones? Oh, you need those notes typed right away, Mr. Jones. Can I wipe your arse, Mr. Jones? I mean, Jesus Christ. She ran the office like it was still 19 bloody 50. You'd think after all those years of serving him hand and foot, he'd have at least shown up to her funeral, but no. That tells you what kind of man he really is. Died, you say? That's a shame. Good woman, that one. Not too many of those left these days. Things were so bad. I thought maybe a random act of kindness would be the way to help. You know, we've all heard his troubles at home. And his mum. You know she's not well. Some lung thing I heard. So I thought, why not just put all our differences aside and get him a little something to say I was thinking of him. So I went out and I bought him the most wonderful gift. An edible fruit bouquet. An edible fruit bouquet? I mean, who does that? Firstly, fruit is perfectly acceptable as it is. There's no need to organise it into some kind of art sculpture. I mean, Jesus Christ, it pretty much sums up everything that's wrong in the world, doesn't it? I spent ages on that thing, picking just the right fruit I thought he would like. I was so proud when it was delivered. And I really thought we would turn a corner, you know? Cost a fortune too, but it was worth it if it would just make things better. I mean, what sort of man has a has a bunch of flowers on his desk, let alone a bunch of flowers made of fruit. Ridiculous. I put it straight. In the bin. He put it in the bin, right in front of everyone. How did I feel? Bloody embarrassed. embarrassed. I, I was, was mortified. mortified. Really? Everyone was looking. They were smirking like it was really funny. He made a big deal of it. What, what idiot, idiot brought, brought these, these in? in, he said. And then he stomped over to the bin and chucked the whole thing in. Everyone was looking at me. They were all laughing. Oh, I wanted the ground to swallow me up. All I ever wanted was to fit in. My mum told me, you know, she said, advertising is a tough industry for women. I laughed at her. I mean, that attitude is from the dark ages now, right? Turns out, she was bang on. Hannah started with us as an intern. Right from the start, you could see it was going to be trouble. And I should have known straight away that she'd crack under pressure. She came clacking in in those ridiculous red shoes, all perfume and smiles, shaking hands and greeting people. <laughs> she had ideas above her station. It was clear even then. An internship with Holden and Brown was the golden ticket everyone in my class wanted. I was so proud when I got the call to say that I had been chosen. I knew then that this was my opportunity, my chance at my dream career. I meticulously chose my outfit to impress them. A smart two-piece suit with a funky shirt. Feminine, 
but professional, with a little personality, but not too much. And then the finishing touch, my killer red shoes. No, I, I don't think I treated her any differently from any of the other interns. This place is like a, like a revolving door for these fools. Gordon feels sorry for them. And if they wear a short skirt, more the better. They come in here, do a bit of photocopying and think they're going to be the next James Holden. <laughs> he was actually OK in the beginning. That's what makes all this so weird. He didn't make any effort or anything, but he wasn't mean either. I reckon I was pretty invisible to him, to be honest. Not that I didn't try, mind you. He is the guy, you know? The guy you need to get in with if you want to get ahead. So I did everything I could to get noticed. Offered to take minutes of his meetings, make his coffee, anything I could to engage him in some sort of conversation. Even laughing at his terrible jokes. Before long, she was popping up everywhere. Everywhere I went, her perfume wafted by. The, the stink of that, that smell got right in the back of my nose, bloody rancid. You know, my mother warned me about women like her. Only whores wear red shoes. It was December when Gordon called me into his office to say that June was retiring, and if I wanted to, I could replace her. I was so happy. I mean, I know it's only an admin role, but you have to start somewhere, don't you? So Gordon was taken in, hook, line and sinker. <laughs> no surprise there. He always had an eye for the ladies. <laughs> The staff Christmas party was a bit of a turning point when I think and look back now. We'd all had a few too many. Gordon was doing his Santa Claus bit and making all the girls sit on his knee for a little longer than necessary. And we'd all played a few too many games of beer pong. I went outside for a smoke and found Oliver there on his own. He was minced totally out of his head hammered. He bummed a fag and out of nowhere just started talking to me. <laughs> he was wearing this silly tie with like a snowman on it. Funny how you remember things like that, isn't it? It had this weird 3D carrot nose which had gone all floppy. Told me about his wife. <laughs> God. What a heartless bitch she is. My wife? What, what about my wife? Ran off with another bloke. And with his poor mum not well too. Just what has any of this got to do with my wife? Although, after this past year, it doesn't surprise me one little bit. I'd have run off too if I was her. She told you what? What is this? Some intrusion into my private life just because some piece of jumped up gossiping skirt thinks she knows it all. I thought after that party, we would start to get on. <laughs> How stupid was I? It started as soon as we got back to work. At first it was just little things, you know? Like his coffee wasn't hot enough or having a go at me for being a minute or two late. At first I just thought he had high standards. A, a bit on edge maybe. God knows, he'd been through a lot. Been through a lot? Yeah. You could put it like that. Look, I'll humour you with this ridiculous HR process. But my private life is off limits. Got it. To be fair to him, I had only just taken over from June. And she had been there since the beginning of time. Maybe we just needed some adjustment. Time to get into our groove. So I just got my head down and tried my best. Got his coffee just right, arrived 10 minutes early, every single day, and worked late most of the time too.
Then he started on my work. Her quality of work? You have to understand. I'm massively overqualified for this job. I have a first-class honours degree in advertising, for God's sake. I took real pride in each and every piece I typed for him. Always the best quality of work. Always before the deadline. Substandard at best. But it was never good enough for him. He would make me redo everything. If he saw a mistake, it was binned and I had to start over. Sometimes he would just return it and not even tell me what was wrong. That was impossible. I would reword, retype, restructure, and I could never figure out what was wrong. Then Wait. he made me start working late. They don't teach these girls proper secretarial skills anymore. They come in here and then they want to run the place, not give enough time for the tasks they're actually made for. So I thought I'd teach her, fill in the gaps, help her out, make her a valuable replacement for June. So I stayed late, gave up some of my time, supported her. Isn't that what you people say you want? It was weird. Everyone else would be finished for the day, so it was just me and him in the office. He would give me some task, something really menial like type a note or do some photocopying while he just... He just watched. Standing over me or sitting across from my desk. He didn't do anything else. He just sat there, looking at me. If anything didn't please him, he would make me do it again and again and again. Quite a good scheme, if I do say so myself. Bit of one-to-one -one coaching, setting the quality standard. My mum said it wasn't right all these late nights. But I so wanted to impress him. He told me not to tell anyone. Said it was our secret coaching session. I think he enjoyed it, you know? Humiliating me like that. Of course I told her not to tell anyone. Then everybody else would want special attention, wouldn't they? God knows how many morons Gordon would send my way then. <laughs> Went on for months. Sometimes we would be in every night. Sometimes just once a week. There was this one time where we had a whole three weeks with no sessions. I thought maybe it was over. But then it all started again. Even worse than it was before. It's weird though. I was so happy when he said I'd done a good job. Like his approval meant everything. Just what are you suggesting here? I was so embarrassed with the whole thing. I stopped speaking to anyone. I felt like maybe it was my fault. Like if only I had done a better job in the beginning. Not sent him that stupid bouquet. Maybe I would have been okay. Stupid. Naive. Look. It's not my fault that she's useless. useless. Jesus Christ, you, you, you help someone out and this is, this is all you get. Nothing but bloody grief. It's my mum that made me come and speak to you today. She sat me down and made me tell her everything. It's weird. You know? Saying the words out loud. It's like looking in a mirror and seeing things for what they really are, you know? I'll probably leave the company now. I can't imagine working here anymore. But I thought if I just came in 
and told you what was going on, maybe you would be able to help the next person that comes in before things get out of hand. Look, I've humoured you for long enough, but enough is enough. I've worked here for more than 20 years and I've secured more than half of these clients. I walk and so do they. Do you want to take that chance? I don't think so. This meeting is over. I mean, what's the point? What the fuck is the point? Oh, don't cringe when I swear. You know I bloody hate that. Oh, sorry. You know it's over. What exactly do you think a marriage counsellor will do to change anything? I'm sorry, Jen. Don't touch me. Don't fucking touch me. I love you, Jen. Surely there's something here that's worth saving. You know, I mean, you don't stay with someone for, for 23 years for nothing. Nothing. Yeah, that's about right. How can you say that? Haven't you had everything that you, you wanted? The, the house, the pool? Haven't you always had everything that you've ever wanted? How long do you think they'll be? We've already been in here for ages. Come on, Jen. Talk to me. I don't have time to stand about here waiting. I've got better things to do. Oh, I am sorry. I thought our marriage might have deserved an hour of your precious time. What marriage, Ollie? What marriage? This joke? 23 years of nothing? Of sitting about waiting for something, anything, to happen? Anything to change this mundane, pathetic existence. Pathetic? Night after night, day after day, egg on toast for breakfast, cut into little soldiers like mother used to make, percolated coffee, not too cold, not too hot. God forbid it's a fraction of a degree different or the world might end. Oh, Jen, and please. then it's time to get showered. Exactly 7.5 minutes, thermostatically controlled to 26 degrees, of course. Comb hair, brush teeth, but don't forget to rinse the toothbrush. Let's not forget about Toothpaste Gate of 2009. And then it's time to get dressed in exactly the same Marks and Spencer shirt, suit and tie that you've worn every day for the last 20 bloody years creased in exactly the right place and meticulously ironed every Sunday morning since 2005. Unless, of course, it's Christmas and then it's the Christmas tie. Because, God forbid, folk wouldn't think you had a sense of humour, Ollie. Oliver Jones, life and soul of the party. Jane, this is cruel. Oh, sorry. Did I get something wrong? Some tiny detail that I forgot to mention? Jesus Christ, oh, 23 years and every day the same schedule. Can't you see how that would wear someone down? I, I just wanted things to be right. I know. I know you did. Is that why you did it? Because I'm boring. Jesus, here we go. No, no, come on, Jen. We're, we're here now. Let, let's speak about this. Can't we wait until we go in to speak about this? No, actually, I'd rather speak about this right now. So tell me, Pablo, exciting, is he? Loads of fun, I bet. 
won't do this, Ollie. Oh, yeah, I, I bet he's loads of fun, isn't he? I bet you have loads of fun and I'm sitting there slaving away to fund your lavish lifestyle. I bet you laugh and laugh at the silly fool who has no idea while you roll around naked on that mock fur leopard print throw. Come off it, Ollie. Oh, mock fur leopard print throw. I mean, if a leopard were in the jungle in that shade of pink, he'd be torn to shreds. Mock Sick. fur leopard print throw. Who buys that? Oh, I'm sorry. You do. With my money, and I bet Pablo does as well, doesn't he? God, sick. Oh yeah, I bet Pablo has loads of mock fur leopard print in his love shack. Mock leopard, mock, mock zebra, bloody mock bloody rainbow, bloody multicoloured lion mane, am I right? This is grow up, will you, Oh Ollie? yeah, grow up, grow up and get myself a waste of space career like he does, isn't he? Spraying pet spray paints all day. He's a mural artist, actually. Ooh, oh, 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 I am sorry. I'm a mural artist. <laughs> and it's part of his job shagging the first tart who spreads her legs for him, is it? <laughs> you are an arsehole, Ollie. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to say that. I know. I didn't mean to you, though, Ollie. I didn't mean to hurt you like this. I, I, I know. They will ask us about it, you know. I mean, I don't want to talk about it either, but it's when everything changed. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't either of our faults. Oh, please, Jen, I don't want to talk. There's just some things you can't control. Life isn't a thermostat. Sometimes things are unpredictable. Sometimes things just happen. I'm, I'm sorry, Jen. He would have been, he would have been 15 years old last week. Did you know that? If he'd been born on his due date. Fifteen years old. He nearly made it. Everything could have been so different. Jen. Uh-huh. I've got something I have to tell you. Sorry. My mother. Sorry. What? My, my mother. Oh. Um, Here we go. Here we bloody go. Oh, Jen, Jen, oh, please. Oh, can't we just talk for five minutes without your bloody mother coming into things? Jesus Christ, Ollie, I've had to put up with her for the last 23 years. Can we not just finish things without her sitting between us like a bad smell? Oh, but, but she... No, no, no. I am sick to death of that old bitch coming between us. I'm sorry, I know she's not been well, but for God's sake! Don't speak about my mother like that. No, don't speak about my mother like that. Jesus Christ, Ollie. Even now you can't stand up to her and she isn't even here. It's not like that. You, you know my father Oh, had to... I know. I know. Your father, the famous waste of space, who left your poor defenceless mother all alone in the world to fend for her poor little self. Jesus Christ, Ollie, loads of people have tough times, but it doesn't Gave them the excuse to be such a vindictive cow. How many times did I try to get her to like me? Presents, visits, trips out even. But nothing mattered. No one could be good enough for our precious little Oliver. She's just protective. Protective? Jesus Christ, Ollie. If she could have pushed you around in a pram all these years and kept you in nappies, 
she still wouldn't be happy. It's a wonder she didn't appear at the dinner table every night to cut your bloody food up and feed it to you. I'm sorry that wasn't fair. I know it's complicated. I just didn't want to share you with her, you know? She, she just, you and her just had the special thing. She just clicked the fingers and you'd go running. Whatever she asks, you'd do it, no questions asked. It's hard to share your husband with another woman, especially someone who hates you no matter what you do. This is what I can't stand, this stonewalling. You never speak to me. You shut me out. What's wrong with you, Ollie? Come on, come on, say something. Sweep me off my feet. Tell me you love me. Tell me you hate me, anything. Say something, Ollie, or I'll walk. Go out that door and you will never see me again. I just can't do this anymore. I loved you. I loved you too. Well, don't just stand there, boy. Come in. <coughs> yes, Mother. My loving son. So loving that he spent a fortune trying to find the best and most luxurious home for me to die alone in. Isn't he a good boy? Come here, Oliver. Let me look at you. Hmm. I see you've not creased your trousers properly again. What's the matter with you? How many times have I shown you how to iron? Sorry, Mother. Take this ridiculous pillow away, Oliver. I don't know what's wrong with these people. As if a pillow's going to help now. I can't so much as breathe without them coming in. They sit there, listening, watching everything I do like I'm in prison. And when I start to forget they're there, they come in and add another bloody pillow. It's like living inside a padded cell. I swear these pillows will be the death of me. Oh, Oliver, sit down, will you? You're making everyone uncomfortable standing there like an undertaker. <coughs> yes, Mother. Where's Jennifer? She didn't accompany you? No, Mother. <coughs> Get me a glass of water, Oliver. Come on. Haven't I taught you any manners? How are you feeling, Mother? What a stupid question. How do you think I'm feeling, you little fool? Glorious. I'm feeling glorious, Oliver. Like every day is a fresh new start. I, I'm sorry, Mother, that was insensitive. <sighs> yes, it was, Oliver. I must have told you any better than this. 
Well, come on. What's the Lady Jennifer's excuse today? It's not surprising she won't take time to visit a poor, frail old lady. She's always been a selfish bitch. At least she'll be glad when I'm gone. Will you be glad, Oliver? What do you mean, Mother? Oh, for God's sake, wash your ears out once in a while. I said, will you be glad when I'm dead? Of course not, Mother, but please. Please? Please? Well, come on then, boy. Where is she? She's not coming. Stop mumbling, boy. Speak up. I said she's not coming. Oh, really? Why not? Too good for the likes of me, I'll bet. No, she, um, she, she, she... Oh, she... come on, boy. I thought I'd whip that stammer out of you years ago. Come on out with it. She's leaving me, Mother. Leaving you? Oh, well done. Well done, Oliver. <laughs> what a mess you've made. Failure as a son, failure as a husband. <laughs> Stands to reason, really. <laughs> Pathetic, useless, just like your father. <laughs> Must be in the genes. <laughs> Please, Mother, you're making yourself cough. Leaving you. Well, well. I saw that coming. These tramps nowadays don't know how to stay with a man. I knew she'd be trouble as soon as I met her. Didn't I tell you? Yes, Mother. Click clacking along in those ridiculous shoes. Didn't I tell you? Only whores wear red shoes. Don't say I didn't warn you. Yes, Mother. Should have listened to you. You, you know best. Of course you should have. Well, you've learned now, haven't you? Oh, Oliver. No tears for that little tart. No tears. I loved her, Mother. I loved her so much. I know, Oliver. I know. Now, you know, Oliver, don't you? Mother would never hurt you like this. She's a bad woman. You know that now, don't you? Yes, Mother. And you'll not leave Mother again now, will you? Oliver? No, no, Mother. Because now you know how it feels, don't you, boy, when someone leaves you? Yes, Mother, I, I promise I, I, I won't leave you. This has been a distressing conversation, boy. Very upsetting indeed. That was very selfish of you. You knew it would remind me of your father. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Mother. You look just like him, you know. We were so happy, your father and I. Like Romeo and Juliet. Then you came along and spoiled everything. I'm sorry, Mother. I didn't mean to spoil everything. Squealing, wailing mess. No wonder he left you. But I didn't leave you, Oliver. Oh, no. I raised you all on my own. Put a roof over your head, clothes on your back, food in your belly. No man would want me then, not with a screaming infant to support. But I never left you, Oliver. And still, even after all these years, you disappoint me. Please, please Mother, you, you're going to make yourself cough again. <laughs> oh, oh, you'd love that, wouldn't you? <laughs> and then I'd die and leave you to live your selfish little life with no mother to worry about it anymore. <sighs> selfish little bastard. Selfish little bastard! Selfish little bastard. <sighs> Stop.
still. She's leaving you then. Good. I told you we did the right thing. Mother always knows best. Can you imagine a little baby with a waste of space like you for a father and a, and a selfish bitch like her for a mother? Some people just shouldn't have children. And you nearly left it all too late, as if you'd forgotten all the times before. I'm sorry, Mother. I should have listened to you. I thought it would be OK. Things were... Things were so good then. We were... We, we, we were happy. You would have been 15 now. She worked it out. Things could have been all so different if only we'd have got through this. Stop that nonsense. Ridiculous way for a man to behave. Don't you remember what happens when you cry like a baby? Do we need to put you in the cupboard again? No, Mother, I'm a big boy. I'm a grown-up. Good. Now listen to me, you pathetic little fool. She's gone now. And there's no reason for me to be holed up in this prison. Go on, out there and tell them that you'll take me home with you. Go on. You, you, you want to live with me? Of course not. But I don't have much choice, do I? And you owe me. Think of all those years I took care of you all on my own. You owe me this. All those years. Now go on, Oliver. Mother knows best. Go and tell them you're taking me home with you. Living on your own. Why are you standing there like that? Go on. Tell them. Some people just shouldn't have children. Look, what, what is this? Am I under arrest? This is Detective Constable Amanda Taylor interviewing Mr Oliver Jones on October 27th, 2019. The time is 16.32. Mr Jones, I have to inform you this interview will be recorded and can be used as evidence in court should it be required at a later date. Can you confirm you're happy to proceed on this basis, Mr Jones? For the purpose of the tape, Mr Jones has indicated with a nod his agreement. Mr Jones, your mother was Ms Barbara Jones, last listed place of residence, Oak Park Retirement Home. Is that correct? For the tape, please, Mr Jones. <coughs> Sorry, uh, yes, she is. <coughs> Sorry, yes, she was. Look, what is this? Should I call my solicitor? That won't be necessary. I know this is a difficult time and you've had a long wait today. It is customary in the case of an unexplained death for us to interview as many people as we can to help us understand the circumstances leading up to and just after the death. We'll be as brief as possible. Unexplained? Uh, uh, Amanda, my mother had emphysema. She smoked a, a pack a day since she was a teenager. Surely the cause of death is, is, is pretty clear. Look, let's not waste any more time on this. I'm sure we've all got better things to be doing. Mr Jones, sit down, please. And I would appreciate it if you would refer to me as D.C. Taylor. Thank <clears throat> you. My humble apologies, D.C. Taylor. Thank you, Mr Jones. Now, I need to understand the circumstances surrounding your mother's death. 
Can you tell me how you came to find yourself at Oak Park Retirement Home? Well, DC Taylor, I came to find myself at my mother's retirement home because, surprisingly enough, I was visiting my mother. Oh, any more unexplained mysteries you want to ask me about? Some UFOs, perhaps? The Loch Ness Monster? Mr Jones, if you cooperate, this process will be made a lot simpler. We're just trying to understand what happened to your mother, so please just answer the questions. I'm sorry. It's been a long 24 hours. I'll cooperate. I'll ask, ask your questions. What time did you arrive at your mother's retirement home? Uh, 1.40. I always arrive at my mother's um, retirement home at the same time every day. She likes to see me um, after her lunch and before she has her afternoon nap every day. So I use my lunch hour for it. At least I did. Don't know what I'm going to do with my lunchtime now. Was anyone else there when you arrived? One of the nurses. <laughs> Forget which one, they all look the same to me. And how did your mother seem to you? Just the same as she always does. Uh, asking me about my day, uh, coughing, coughing a bit. That would be the, the cough, the lung, part of your mother's lung condition, I understand. And did that seem any worse than usual yesterday? Uh, a little, maybe. Uh... It's difficult to say. She, she's been coughing for a long time, but considering what happened afterwards, uh, it must have been, uh, yes. So you stayed with your mother for a little while. Can you say how long? Uh, 40 minutes. I, I left at 2.20. I, I need 10 minutes for the journey. Well, or, or eight minutes, actually. Uh, but, but you need two minutes for any unexpected delay. Uh, I, I mean, you, you can't plan. There's some things you, you can't plan for anything. I mean, Amanda, the, life isn't a thermostat, you know. Uh, I'm sorry, Amanda. So, sorry, DC Taylor. Sorry. Are you all right, Mr Jones? Would you like some water? Yes, yeah, some water. Get me some water. You've been through a lot, Mr. Jones. Just take your time. Been through a lot, yeah. Yeah, you could put it like that. Look, look, um, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm, I've, had, I've had very little sleep. P please, please carry on. Did you notice anything unusual when you left your mother yesterday? Uh, no, no, no. She was fine. Uh, nothing, nothing unusual at all. Uh, I, I was, I was shocked to receive the call. That would be the call at fifteen thirty, logged from Oak Park Retirement Home to your mobile phone. Yeah. Next of Kinsey. I'm an only child. My father. My father's no longer with us. They called me to tell me she was gone. There's nothing they could do to save her. They'd gone in to, to check on her for a nap, and I'm sure they did everything they could. Good staff, good, good people there. Oak Park Retirement Center, the most luxurious place to more water, Mr. Jones. Thank you. So you see, so you see, there's, there's nothing unusual there. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, DC Taylor, for being so thorough. I, I'm sorry it's been a waste of, of, of all of our times. Uh, no, no, if, if you'll excuse me, I, I've, I've got a funeral to plan. Thank you, Mr. Jones. There's just one more thing I'd like to ask you. If you'll just humour me for a while, it won't take long. What did you and your mother discuss yesterday? D discussed? Yes. What did you speak about during your visit? Oh, I don't know. I, I can't really remember. Are you sure, Mr Jones? I find that surprising, given that it was the last conversation you ever had with your mother. I think I'd remember it if it were me. 
I think I'd remember it word for word. J just what are you trying to say? Just doing my job, Mr Jones. I'm building a picture. I have a witness testimony here that states there were raised voices during your visit. Did you have an argument with your mother, Mr Jones? I, I love my mother. I love my mother so much. Do, do you have any idea how difficult it was? <laughs> no. No, you don't. I tried. I tried to do everything to help her, everything to please her, but it, but it was never enough. Ever. Maybe Jennifer was right. Maybe I did too, too much for her. But I tried. I tried everything to do to please her. God damn it, I tried, but it wasn't enough in the end. Oh, sorry. Forgive me, please, God, forgive me. Interview terminated, 1647. Mr Jones, I'm sorry we had to have this conversation today. I know it's so upsetting to lose someone so close. Anyone can see you loved your mother. It's so distressing to have a relative with a disease so awful. There's something I have to tell you and I'm sorry if it gives you any more pain. How can it possibly be any worse? My life, it's over. It's the time of death, you see. I'm afraid your mother had been dead for over an hour when the care staff came in and found her. Seemingly, she had an acute coughing fit just after you left, which triggered her heart to stop. Perhaps brought on by the argument, but that's hard to say. What? I'm afraid if the care staff had been listening, as they should have, they could have saved your mother's life. I'm so sorry, Mr Jones. I can see how traumatic this has been for you. You will have a strong case to sue Oak Park Retirement Home for negligence if you consider to do so. Now, I've taken up enough of your time on this sad day. Please, you are of course free to go. Thank you, DC Taylor. Please, call me Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs>